There are a lot of heavy tanks available to grind in World of Tanks Blitz, and many of them have their advantages and disadvantages. The E100 has a huge amount of alpha damage, it's got even decent penetration, but it's not super accurate and it doesn't feature much DPM at all. In fact, it's one of the lowest DPM tier 10 heavies, only sitting at around 2,000. 300. You have vehicles like the Object 260, which are really fast and have solid DPM and accuracy, but rather poor penetration at only 350 millimeters, while also not featuring much armor. And that's obviously going to be a common trade-off. There are very few heavies in the game that have everything going for them. There are a couple. I would be willing to say the Object 777 version 2, with its speed, DPM, accuracy, and penetration paired with its mobility, makes it one of the most capable tanks in Tier 10. But even then, it has awful reverse speed, and it has very poor track wheels. It has a terrible ammo rack and only 6 degrees of gun depression. The Super Conk is great, but it does lack the penetration at only 336 millimeters of premium, which is kind of mediocre if I'm going to be completely honest. A lot of tanks are like that. So, if you really wanted to ask me what the best heavy in tier 10 is, well, unironically, it's a tank destroyer. It's the T110E4. Why? Well, first of all, this tank has an extremely dangerous gun, with just shy of 3,000 DPM when running calibrated shells. The vehicle has crazy good standard pin at 290, 412 on the heat, and 103 on the high explosive, dealing upwards of 630 damage a shot. So it hits hard and has more DPM than any other heavy style vehicle really out there. It's somewhat accurate if you're especially running refined gun with a pretty good aiming time. When you pair that with the fact this vehicle has a very solid power to weight of 17 and a top speed of almost 40, this tank is fast. It has really solid armor frontally. Wargaming changed the hatch on this vehicle and it's actually rather tricky to penetrate now. When you add all these things together, the E4 really is quite the, quite the heavy tank. And because of that, as I said, I think this is actually the best heavy to grind. And it's even better because it's a tank destroyer. Meaning that you don't just need to play like a heavy tank. You're not forced to the heavy side of the map. If you are driving this vehicle, you can play passive. You don't need to always be in the front line. And that's really nice because I don't always want to be in the front line. Sometimes I do want to stay a little bit further back. And I want to support my team somewhere else or go to the medium flank. And if I'm in a slower heavy, it usually sucks when you have to do that. Because you're either left behind or... Well, you just get bullied by a lot of the more mobile vehicles. But in the E4, it's got the mobility, it's got the pen, it's got the DPM. The only real downside is it's actually awful reverse at 10 kilometers per hour, and the fact that it doesn't have the hit points of a heavy tank. It only has 2,200-ish. It's still a lot, to be fair, but it's not nearly as much as, let's say, an E75, which is at 2,000. 500. So these are some things you should keep in your mind. I would really like to see Wargaming give this vehicle sandbags, because I think that would really push it over the limit. But even then, it's quite the healthy vehicle. And when you pair that with the fact that it's mobile and it has everything else going for it, it really is quite the beast. So we can see a tree was knocked down already. I'm not sure if that means we're going to see a tank make its way up this hill. Well, I mean we are, but obviously just not directly in front of me. I'm stuck on... Oh, I was stuck on the edge of this rock, and unfortunately, it was causing our gun depression to not be exactly the way we wanted it to. We have the Type 68, who is uh, showing me his turret, and as much as I would love to shoot him, our 57 Heavy has decided he's going to drive over the ridge. Well, that's all right. We are going to aim in on the Waffenträger Panzer IV and take 705 off, and in return, we're going to lose a full health 40 percenter. Well, it's not like he was going to do much anyway, let's be honest. We have the Waffenträger in the back again, and, oh, he backed up. Well, we are going to back up as well, because we have an IS-7 and a Yag, who are both aiming in on us. The IS-7 was actually able to connect the shell, but nothing I'm obviously too worried about. We get a nice shot into the Yag, and look at that. Bounces right off the roof of my turret, and then he gets mad. Well, that sounds like a skill issue. Let's reload again. We have three seconds left on this tank's reload. It has very, very good DPM as we went over. And just like that, our 400 mils of heat cuts right through his tank. No trouble whatsoever. This vehicle is a beast. And you're seeing why. The gun hits 
really hard. And when you pair the hard-hitting gun with the fact that this vehicle is pretty accurate and everything else, I mean, look at that. Easy shot into the Yag. He's mad, again. And uh, what's great is we also out-reload him. Now, the Type 68 might pen me, but honestly, I don't really care that much because we can just load a gold shell and turn his entire turret into a penetrable weak spot. And now we just back up. We do get penned by the Type 71, but... I don't really care. We've blocked 2,500 in this game already, which is quite a lot when you think about it. And uh, we're going to aim it on the Type 71. There you go. Very easy shot right into his turret cheek for 518. So we are already up to 3,300 damage. We still have 870 health left. And in three seconds, we're going to have another shell. So we're just going to poke this again. And we'll see if this enemy Type 71 gives us the opportunity. Oh, we also have the Type 68. Ooh, look at that. Right into his hatch for 674. The WZ pushes our type, who has done nothing for the team but sit in the base cap the entire battle. But thankfully, we have been doing a pretty solid job. Well, what do we have? The enemy type is going to aim it on me. And, ooh, a little, a little unfortunate. He does actually manage to pen me, but I don't really think it's that big of a deal. What would be great is if our E100 was able to make a play here and... Well, we actually can see the enemy Waffenträger has moved. So if that's the case, I'm going to drive right on over this ridge, and uh, we're just going to finish off this player in the Type 68. See ya! 494 damage, and he is gone. Now what we do know is that the enemy team still has a lot of tanks left, some of which are really, really dangerous on our rear. So we're going to get the shell into the enemy Type 71, and just like that, all that's left is a triple seven. I would expect our E100. Actually, no, I might out-reload the E100. So we're going to load in an HE shell. We're going to finish off for 220 damage. Just like that, we are uh, quite hefty in terms of damage output at 5,300. I think that's pretty good if you ask me. And we're not done yet. Ooh, we have the enemy Waffträger. However, he gets shot, which is rather unfortunate because I was hoping we could get a little bit of extra damage out. But... We still get at least a 400 damage clear into his tank, which is always very nice. But now we reload 5,700 damage dealt. There's the enemy Yag Panzer E100. And let's see. Nice. The Yag gets reset. So all we got to find is the WZ. Now, the WZ is obviously quite a big threat because it can hit very, very hard. But not hard enough as he's dead. So just like that, we have single-handedly brought what was a pretty tricky situation to quite a solid victory. And if we get the shell into this Jagdpanzer, we will indeed get, uh, well, we're just going to load an HE on his engine deck. We will indeed get 6,000 damage. So how's that, ladies and gents? How is that for the capabilities of the T-110E4? You can say your opinions. You can say I bought a bunch of bots, and I did. They were quite bad. But you cannot sit here and tell me any other heavy tank would have been able to deal as much damage as the E4 in that situation. You can't, because heavies don't have as much pen, they don't have as much DPM, and most of them don't feature the level of accuracy this vehicle has. 6,160 damage. 6 kills. And the only tank we didn't kill was unfortunately a vehicle that the E100 ended up clearing. I don't even know who it was, but... Uh, Rather unfortunately, the E100 was able to pick up a clear on one of the tanks we were trying to get killed. But uh, yeah, that was a that was a pretty strong game. And as I said, the E4 is just a beast. I don't understand why people don't realize how capable this tank is. It has really no downsides. I mean, sure, it's pretty easy to pen when it exposes its armor, but we blocked over 2,500 that game, which is just as much, if not more, than I'd expect to block in any heavy tank. And not only that, but we did way more damage than I would have expected to deal in any heavy. The only heavies I would expect to even deal good damage in the first place are maybe a Kron on that hill, an M6Yo, something that has gun depression, turret armor, and DPM. And neither the M6... I mean, the M6 show does have DPM, but only if you're running the triple shot. I run the double shot because it deals good damage per shot. Uh, this tank doesn't need to worry about that. You deal good damage, you have good mobility, and, well, now we arrive to our second game. So, what do we have? Kron, 268 version 4, E75, E75, Type 68. Now, normally when you're up against a V4, especially if you're in something, let's say, like an Object 260 or Super Conqueror, that's when the pretty poor penetration might be a problem. But in a tank like this, with over 400 millimeters of heat, I don't think that's really going to be much of a troubling situation for you. You are just going to load heat and cut right through whatever is in front. 
So, what do we have covering us? Well, quite a bit of our team, which is very nice. Usually, it's very rare to have your teammates supporting you. And again, we can see the mobility here. This tank is really, really quick. And there you go. Nice 637 damaging shell into the Kron. He does shoot me again, but I'm going to make it rather challenging for him to get off that final shell. In fact, we are just going to overpoke him. Oh, never mind. That is a 183. And as we all know, I don't want to be shot by that. So we're not going to. We get one nice shell and, uh, well, let's see what we can do. E75 is right here. And there you go. Nice 600 juicer into his tank. We are already up to 18 hundred damage. I know for a fact that 183 is poking again, so I have to be very, very careful. I do not want to be shot by a 183. Well, oh, that Kron's poking again, and let's see. There you go. 568 damage shell into the Kron, and I'm going to try and uh, block for my teammate here. Come on. Come on. What are you going to do, buddy? Yeah, that's what I thought. And then you get shot again, and if I just reload very, very briefly, see ya. There you go. 526 and clearing the enemy Kron. We can see that the 183 is still in the back, which is obviously something to keep in mind, but it's not that big of a problem because we are going to aim in on the 183 and see ya. Bye-bye. That was the big threat. Now that the 183 is dead, I don't have nearly as much to worry about. Chieftain bounces the E75, and I'm going to aim it on the E75 myself. We're going to load in a standard shell for 650 damage, and we're going to get a bounce in the process. So already, we have dealt a lot of damage. And, like, a lot, a lot. 4,000. I am not going to worry too much about the Type 68. I'm going to try and help out with, well... I don't know. I don't like this situation, but I do think it's important to help out with the 268 version 4, so that's exactly what I'm going to do here. We're going to chill, and, uh, well, we're going to move up just a little bit. The 268 shoots, and that is going to give me the opportunity to move up myself and aim in on his vehicle. We're going to load in a heat shell and easy pen right into his lower plates. Unfortunately, oh, never mind, we have the 92 behind the V4, which is obviously pretty good. We're just going to aim in a heat shell, and see ya! 473 damage later, ya dead. I think it was the right play to go for that V4. I don't think these guys over here were really too important. As mad as our Type 68 is, um, it's just you need to clear the most important threats. And the low health tanks that are Tier 9 really aren't that big of a problem. A full health V4 is. So all that's left is an E75, who is most likely going to poke right here. Interesting. Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because our T92 finishes off the E75, and that was another pretty good game. So, for any of you wondering, on my opinions of the E4, two back-to-back -back battles dealing over 5,000 damage in both should solidify my opinions. You can disagree with them, but at the end of the day, I think I've done my worth, and I think I've shown a pretty proper reason to why the E4 is literally better than just the majority of heavies. It has more DPM than any heavy you're really going to fight, it has way more pen, way more damage per shot, it has armor, and it has the mobility, as you saw, to get in and out of situations placed in front of you. And wow, is this thing a freaking beast. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video, I'll see you all in the next one, Bye bye